Subaru's main market resides outside of the UK. It's a brand that prides itself on being capable, reliable and super safe. All Subarus get all-wheel drive as standard and they're one of the few manufacturers which have a five-star NCAP rating across the range. Behind me is the brand new Subaru Solterra, one of the first cars to be in collaboration with Toyota. Will the Subaru Solterra still carry across that Subaru DNA or is it simply just a rebadged Toyota? Well, hopefully that's what we're gonna find out in today's video. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you like electric car reviews and electric content, then make sure you're subscribed to Electroheads. Okay, so let's have a little bit of background history on the Solterra. Subaru has partnered up with Toyota to create its first zero emissions SUV, with the Subaru's long list of rivals including the Audi Q4 e-tron, Mustang Mach-E, Kia EV6 and Tesla Model Y. The Solterra has a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery and comes in two trim levels, the limited trim with 289 miles and the flashier touring spec which has a range that decreases to 257. Subaru has opted to only bring the dual motor version of the Solterra to the UK, meaning all wheel drive is standard and every car gets 215 brake horsepower and 336 newton meters of torque. The 0 to 62 mile per hour sprint takes 6.9 seconds, Subaru hope that customers will trust that their knowledge and experience has gone into creating the X-Mode all-wheel drive in the Solterra. This mode has been designed to use on rougher surfaces, while a new grip control function also allows the car to maintain constant speed and remain stable off-road. The exterior design of the Solterra is sharp and rugged. Compared to its Toyota sibling, you get different LED lights and you get an almost blanked off grille design rather than the smooth off front bumper that you get on the Toyota. However, both cars feature really rugged and wide plastic wheel arches. These are definitely going to be Marmite and they certainly demand attention, but they just hop back to that off-roading capability of the Solterra. In terms of ground clearance, it has one of the best in its class at 210 millimeters. Dimensionally, it's comparable to the combustion engine Forester at 4,690 millimeters long, 1,860 millimetres wide and 1,650 millimetres tall. Around the back and the Subaru is almost identical to its Toyota sibling, apart from the fact that the rear lights aren't connected with a light bar. But I don't think that's a bad thing. This car looks fantastic. It has a real aggression about it. You've got this fantastic spoiler at the top, which is split in two. And then you have this sleek coupe roof design, which has no need for a rear wiper. And then you have this fantastic smaller boot spoiler. Now here is the start of some fantastic standard equipment. Under here, you've got two cameras. The first is for the 360 degree camera, which is a first for Subaru. And the second, well, I'll tell you about that later. All right then, keep your secrets. You also get an electric boot as standard. Inside of this boot, you'll find 450 litres of space, or thereabouts. A little bit more on the bottom spec model and a little bit less on this top spec model because of the sound system. Now that's pretty good when you compare it to other all-wheel drive models, like the Nissan Aria. If you step up to all-wheel drive on the Aria, you get less space than you get in this Solterra. However, compared to other models like the Skoda Enyaq, it's not quite as good. It's also good to note that unlike on the American specification cars, roof rails do come as standard. Jumping into the cabin of the Solterra, and this is exactly how I like my EVs to feel futuristic and driver focused. You have this fantastic center console with that large 12.3 inch touchscreen mounted onto it. And this is actually standard. There's no smaller screens available like elsewhere outside of the UK. The setup is a little bit strange and for taller people, you might struggle to get comfortable. For someone smaller like me, it's pretty good. However, you do have to have the steering wheel down quite low to be able to see 
into that digital instrument cluster. Now the reason Subaru have opted to have the instrument cluster where it is, is so that it's in your line of sight. So you can see your speed and all of your driver's displays without taking your eyes off of the road. Now I understand this is, in theory, a great idea. The only problem is, is sometimes, depending on how you want your steering wheel to be positioned, it's going to get into the way of your instrument cluster. Interior quality is a bit of a mixed bag. Everything feels really secure and solidly put together. However, some of the materials used are a little bit strange. For instance, you've actually got a cloth dashboard. Then you've got the good old gloss black that everyone loves to hate. But something I do love is on this center console, you have this section in the middle, which you can actually see through. And this is where you can put your phone onto a wireless charging pad. And Subaru have said the reason that they've given it a little see-through area is so that you don't lose your phone. The only problem with this that I see is it might distract you a little bit when you flash up with a notification, meaning it might entice you to touch your mobile phone, which I'm not too sure about. Storage, again, is a bit of a mixed bag. I've got a nice two cup holders here. I've got some decent storage in the armrest but this car does lack a glove box. There's no glove box in the Solterra or in the Toyota. However, there's plenty of storage underneath here, but for someone like me that likes to tuck things out of sight, it could be a bit of an issue. Remember me mentioning about that second camera on the back of the Solterra? Well, it's actually for this. The Solterra gets a digital rear view mirror as standard. Because of the Solterra's added ground clearance, it does mean that the floor is relatively high and getting in could be a little bit tricky if you had smaller children. However, once I'm in, despite the floor being high, there's no transmission tunnel, so there's loads of legroom. And actually, it's really comfortable. I thought that with the floor being quite high, I might not have enough headroom. But I've got plenty of headroom even with the panoramic sunroof. I've also got loads of legroom as well. And these seats are also super comfortable back here. On top of that, I've got heated rear seats, two USB-C charging ports, and I've even got a centre armrest with a couple of cup holders and somewhere to pop your mobile phone. It's not only backseat passengers that get to benefit from warm bums. Front passengers also have heated seats and a heated steering wheel. Plus, just like featured on the fancy Lexus cars, these can be set to come on automatically in certain temperatures. Now that's a cold day function that I can get on board with. Another cold day function, which is important to an electric car, is the fact that a heat pump is standard on both variants. As well as those standard heated systems on the interior, you also have quite a clever system System for heating the windscreen. Standard on all Subarus, rather than having a fully heated screen, you have these heated parts along the bottom of the windscreen, which warm up and in turn warm up your windscreen wipers, so you can clear the whole screen much quicker. Although mainly set up for cooler climates, Subaru also has something in place for those warmer days. On the key, underneath your electric boot opening, there's also an AC button. Press this and it will actually pre-cool the cabin. How great is that? So great. So what does the top spec touring car get you over the entry level limited? Well, quite a few things actually, and they're certainly nice upgrades. For a starter, you get part leather interior, as well as electrically adjustable passenger seat. You also get that panoramic sunroof and those larger 20 inch alloy wheels. Thank goodness that despite Lexus being involved in the collaboration, the Solterra uses a CCS charge port. It can accept up to 150 kilowatts of rapid charge, taking the car from 20 to 80% in just 19 minutes. And the same amount of charge can be delivered via seven kilowatt AC charger in under seven hours. Plus bonus, both cables are included. The Subaru doesn't come cheap, with prices for the limited specification car coming in at 49 dollars and the Touring 52995. However, Subaru doesn't offer many add-ons, so there'll be no expensive packs to add on like in some rivals. There is just one very simple sticking point when it comes to the Solterra, and that's that it will cost you around £2,000 more than the equivalent Toyota. Is the Subaru name enough to warrant that uplift in cost? 
I'm not too sure, let me know in the comments down below. But there's no denying Subaru or Toyota, this is a fantastic new electric car offering and great for people that are looking for all-wheel drive. Let me know, what do you think of the Solterra in the comments down below? If you have enjoyed this video today, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more electric car content and electric news, then make sure you're subscribed to the Electro Hedge channel. Until next time, guys, see you later.